everyone begins to attack the Pope together and overwhelms him. The spear throws his rod to penetrate the holy man's no-no squares to allow Naofumi to rush towards him, and dodge his flame attack to absorb it into his shield then unleash it upon the Pope to send him to hell. He recovers from the ass beating and begins to easily defeat the heroes with his holy weapon. The Pope changes to the bow and fires at the Eclipse to trap everyone in Ngenjutsu that makes them begin to panic. He decides to end the fight with one more attack but the Queen arrives on the battlefield and casts a spell to freeze the Pope in place and dispels the illusion. Now Fumi takes the chance to use his rage skill to sacrifice the fluids in his body, to summon a bear trap that takes the Pope into the sky and unite him with the god he worshipped for so long. The sanctuary begins to fall apart as the queen arrives to arrest the defeated worshippers. But they see that Naofumi is still suffering from the recoil of his skill. He awakens in a room surrounded by his harem and discovers that he has been asleep for three days but he won't be able to fight for a month. The queen enters his room and thanks Naofumi for all he has done for their kingdom. But he reveals that her country hates him. She explains that each of the four regions was supposed to summon one hero to fight the waves but while she was away the kidnapper king summoned the heroes by himself, and this forced her to travel to the other regions to stop them from starting a war with her nation. He asks why they despise the shield and she says that each kingdom views the heroes differently, such as the demi-human region who worships the shield like a god. Now Fumi plans to travel there but the queen tells him to wait until after she clears his name before he leaves their kingdom and rewards him with a bag for all his hard work. The next day a huge crowd gathers outside the castle. Now Fumi walks upstairs until he encounters the other heroes and enters the throne room to meet with the queen. They notice that the room seems a bit cleaner as the queen commands the guards to bring the garbage inside. She reveals that they are on trial for all the crimes that they've committed so they begin begging for their worthless lives. The queen puts the old bastard on ice then restrains the evil bitch so they can place a truth crest on her and burns good into her soul. The queen begins the trial by revealing that the garbage duo sponsored the church that tried to smoke the other heroes and wanted to blame Naofumi for it. Mine tries to deny it but she gets a taste of justice. The queen also accuses her of trying to smoke Melty and frame the shield hero for it and even the king seems surprised by how evil she is. Mine protests but the truth continues to shine through her dark soul. The queen then charges the king for summoning the heroes without her knowledge but he explains that he needed them to survive the waves and points out that now Fumi assaulted Mine on the first night so she asks her if it's true. Mine tries her best to lie but the truth hurts more than getting a BBC up the A. Everyone in the country watches as the truth about everything is revealed and it's proven that she's a lying bitch for all to see. The queen brings the trial to an end and punishes her family by sentencing them to the Shadow Realm. They take the two criminals to the Neck Dividers where the queen names them as traitors to the kingdom and prepares to relieve them of their mortal vessels by taking off their melons. Mine turns to Naofumi and begins begging him to save her so he stops the execution and goes down to reveal that the death penalty is too good for these idiots, and decides that from this day on, the king's name will be trash and Mine's name will be bitch but while on adventures she'll be known as whore. The queen accepts this as their punishment and officially change their names, then goes on to abolish the church that stood against their kingdom. Now Fumi walks away with his name cleared but the queen asks him to stay one more night so they can celebrate with him. He reveals to her that he'll start working together with all the nations because he is one of the four heroes. Then meets with Melty on the bridge to part ways with her and begins to leave with his harem. The people gather around them and praise him as their savior while the knights salute him for all he has done to protect their region. The shield hero walks forth with his name redeemed and decides that his new purpose will be to fight the waves wherever they appear. They travel to the uncorrupted church and go inside to get the class upgrade for Philo and Raftalia. After the ceremony was complete they reveal that they didn't get to choose a class, and returns to the queen where she explains that special items can interfere with a job change. So now Fumi begins thinking it happened because of Fitoria's crown. The queen invites him to meet with the rest of the summoned heroes, and reveals that an island that gives bonus XP will be activating soon. But before they go the heroes should share all the secrets they've learned with each other so everyone can survive the upcoming wave. They ask Naofumi how he got so OP but he tells them to go first. 
the spear reveals that you can copy any weapon from your class just by touching it. Then the sword says that you craft items by feeding the materials to your weapons. And the bow explains that they can fast travel to any location that they've been before. The heroes suddenly begin arguing over whose grinding strats are the best. So now Fumi scolds them for being idiots and leave the room. He returns to his area with Raftalia and decides to try out the weapon copy system, but it doesn't show up until he starts believing in what they said. Then the option appears and gets added to his menu. The next day, now Fumi meets up with the queen but finds out that the other heroes already left. So he leaves to go over to the shopkeeper's store. He picks up a shield and makes an exact copy of it to the shopkeeper's dismay. Then they begin taking all his shit to make Nao Fumi even more overpowered than he already was. They begin their journey to the island but Raftalia wants to go on a side quest. She visits her old home and lays her friend to her final resting place. While Nao Fumi walks through the destroyed village where a man suddenly calls to him but a female comes over and tells the stranger to leave. Raftalia returns to Nao Fumi and asks him if he's gonna leave them one day. He tells her that he'll stay to defend the world from the waves then they continue on their main mission. Our party arrives at the port and boards a ship that's going to the island. They see the adventurers they met before and introduces themselves to each other but they don't believe that Nao Fumi is the shield hero because they heard that he's a scumbag and decides to work together to grind levels. They go up to the deck to see the other heroes suffering from being a pussy. He tries to tell them what he found out, but they refuse to listen. The adventurers comes over to Nao Fumi and asks him to craft an item out of gems for them so he decides to take on the job. They arrive on the island and begins to massacre all the harmless creatures that's going about their day. But the monsters stop giving them XP as the other heroes come over and reveals that too many people are hunting in the same area. They begin arguing over who should stay so now Fumi leaves and heads over to another dungeon. Our party begins hunting bigger monsters to get more XP. But Raftalia shows that their weapons are almost destroyed. So now Fumi goes over and tries out the crafting feature to create new weapons for them to use in combat. In the night, they begin gathering all the items they found where now Fumi reveals that he still feels weak after defeating the Pope. The adventurers comes out of the forest to call them back to the main island so they decide to stop grinding for today. On the island, everyone begins drinking together while having a party and for the first time now Fumi finally feels like he belongs. The next day, now Fumi gives Therese her accessory and she begins crying from how beautiful it is. She pays him with a bag and they begin traveling to another dungeon to hunt animals together. They find penguins with missing chromosomes and start to slaughter the fugly looking mofos. Therese begins chanting to unleash the power of her gem to cleanse one from this world. While everyone else continues to slaughter the poor bastards. They encounter the mother of the fugly babies so Noafumi decides to go out and call over the physically challenged creatures. Allowing Therese to give them all the smoke but now Fumi was healed from the flames instead. Then everyone goes and takes Mama Fugly down. They go back to the main island and part ways with the adventurers but now Fumi decides that he'll ask them to join his party the next time they meet. They head to the beach to enjoy the day. But Philo comes over and tells now Fumi that she found an underwater dungeon. Our party begins swimming down in perfectly normal clothing until they arrive at the entrance and opens the giant door to find a platform floating inside. Raftalia uses her light magic and they see another dragon hourglass that begins counting down for the next wave that will appear in two days. They use the fast travel function and return to the queen to tell her what they found. So she gathered her entire army on ships to fight against the upcoming wave. The raid on their world begins with soldiers throwing barrels of wine into the water to explode on impact and paralyzes the monsters so they can receive acupuncture. They see a giant fish heading towards the bow hero and he launches his skill at the monster but it dives under the ocean to attack their ships. Now Fumi takes Philo and goes into the water to chase after it. He taunts the monster so it can follow him to the surface where all the other heroes take the chance to use their team ultimate on the mutated fish. But it wasn't enough and it destroys their ships. The facially challenged creatures begin climbing on board but Melty uses water magic to protect them from swimming with the fishes. A monster comes from behind to take her hostage but Lark comes in clutch to rescue the princess and begins wiping out the ripped jaws easily. 
Philo dives underwater to lure the creature once more into the sky but this time Therese and Mark uses a team ultimate to make the monster become past tense. Now Fumi goes over and thanks Lark for his help while the other heroes comes over to collect the loot they didn't work for. Lark begins scolding them for being weak pieces of shit and blows them off with one swipe of his scythe. He reveals to Nao Fumi that they're also heroes like him but from the other side of the wave. And for his world to survive he must take out all the heroes of this world so the monsters can destroy it. The queen commands her army to attack the new heroes. But Therese blocks their body piercers and begins to cast a spell to rain down fire upon the entire armada but she also creates a rainstorm to put out the flames. Lark tells them that they're here only to take out Nao Fumi and begins to attack him. The harem tries to assist but they're blocked and are blown away. Forcing Nao Fumi to stop his next attack and suck out some of his skill points. Lark goes back into clash with Nao Fumi but he takes damage even though he blocked it. So Raftalia takes on the fight for him while Therese tries to burn Nao Fumi. But the gem refuses to harm him so she swaps it out. Nao Fumi asks why Lark's attacks are so strong and he explains that his weapon gives him the ability to turn his target's defense into his attack. Melty joins the battle and gives them a moral boost so Nao Fumi decides that to win he just won't get hit. The fight continues with Nao Fumi's party working together to overwhelm Lark from all angles until he gets hit by the prison duo combo attack and gets pushed against the air shield so Raftalia can strike him down but Therese saves him at the very last moment. They begin to have a standoff but Glass joins the battle to face Nao Fumi with them. She starts off by using an attack that manages to push him back then follows up with sniper shot but he tanks all of it. So she begins attacking up close but when she sees the Gok Gok shield she chooses to run away. Therese begins chanting to use a team ultimate with glass so now Fumi creates a shield to block the onslaught of their combo attack. He tells his party to let him fight glass alone while they hold off the other heroes and leads her away to another ship. Glass reveals that she's the fan hero and continues the fight but when she gets close enough now Fumi changes to the Gok Gok shield that sucks out her life points instead of her skill points. He tells glass to return to her world but she tries attacking again and gets her soul snatched. She stands again to reveal that in her world her people are currently fighting against the wave and are waiting for her to return victorious so she can't stop fighting until the end. Now Fumi questions if his world is worth saving as Lark throws her a potion to return her strength. Glass starts attacking him but Raftalia comes over and proclaims that she is now Fumi's sword so no one from their world will ever suffer again. Glass rushes in and now Fumi blocks her attack then swaps to the rage shield to push her away but she continues to get back up. Glass prepares to go all out while now Fumi starts his black force activity. He reveals that when all the waves are gone he's going back home but he will protect this world for his harem to continue living in. He begins casting his rage skill and gets ready to summon the bear trap but he's stopped at the last moment. A knight launches barrels of wine at them for Nao Fumi to destroy and make Glass intoxicated. He walks over to the defeated Glass but Lark and Therese arrives to reveal that the wave time has ran out. So they begin to be transported back to their world. Like for a cat girl, subscribe for a waifu, and remember to stay swifty! Ooh.